Hi guys and welcome back to the channel, this is Alex and in this video I'm going to be attempting to show you some different propagation methods using my Echeveria Hatsukoi Variegata. I know some of you will be like, Alex you're absolutely not. But as you can see it's getting quite large and I'm kind of running out of space for it in this little grow tent of mine that I've got here. Um, and so I thought it would be a good idea if I just tried to keep that central rosette that you can see and then I remove the outside leaves for propagation and then I'll be doing a stem chop as well so we'll be doing all the possible propagation methods I think um, within this one video to give you a good example and of course it's a very rare plant it's variegated so I'm really up in the difficulty level and um, Hopefully it will show that if I can do it with this plant, you guys can do it with um, some of the more easier varieties. So first things first, I will pro probably remove the outer leaves, or I may do, do the chem part of the stem chop first, and then I'll, uh, I'll go from there. So let's see how we get on. So as you can see, I've chop the stem so the rosette is now sitting just on top of a, a a plant pot and then this was what we we have left so as a bit of a brucey bonus we have a little bit of a a pulp which is forming which i'm not sure i may just cut that and take it as another cutting as well um another thing we could actually do is to just leave this stem and allow it to produce lots more pups just like this one so I may do that, but um, I will have to have a think because it's quite a large pot and it may take up quite a lot of space. So maybe I will, but I will just leave it um, on a windowsill instead of in the grow tent because obviously it doesn't have any leaves, so it doesn't need the same amount of sunlight. So the next thing I'm going to do is just start to remove some of the leaves. Um, just so I can get that compactness in the centre and then we'll end up propagating those leaves hopefully and then we'll also um, propagate this as well and allow it to produce new roots before we then pot it up again. So my process for that will just be as you can see here sitting it on a pot like this and just waiting until I see roots form on the stem and um, that way I know that it's fully calloused and that I won't have any more problems. Um, so when I, when I want to remove some of these leaves, because it's a variegated plant and because it's a little bit more finicky than some of the other ones, I want to make sure that I remove a little piece of the stem with each leaf. It's not so important with some plants, but with um, hybrids especially, it, it can be quite important. So what that does is just um, a lot of the DNA of the plant is stored in the stem. So if you can take a little piece of that, it gives it a much higher chance of being able to then produce a new plant. So we'll go ahead and do that and then I'll cut back to you. Okay, so I've very carefully removed one, two, three, four, five, six, and then kind of seven, but this one's starting to dry up so it may not have time to produce roots before it does. But they're all a really good size and I'm quite happy with the the way that they came away, you can see that that one there has a little piece of stem attached on the end. Um, I didn't manage to get a piece of stem on all of them, so it would just be a, a waiting game. So there we go. So this is what the plant looks like now. I was tempted to remove this leaf and this leaf as well, but I just don't think I have space to propagate them, so I think I'm just going to leave those for now. They will be quite useful in that the plant will draw upon them to allow it to callus over fully and produce roots. So I think they'll end up kind of getting taken away anyway. So in terms of this pot, like I said, I could just leave this and allow it to produce pups along the stem. Um, but I just don't think I'm going to because of the size of the pot. So I think what I'm going to do is take this little pop out, hope that it has some roots and then pot that one off. Uh, once it's calloused again, and then I will cut back to you. 
Okay, so just for the purposes of this video, I think I will propagate this, just so I can then include all the propagation heights in one video. So, as you can see, I've tipped it out of the, that large pot. The root system's pretty extensive, but I'm going to try and fit it into a bit of a smaller pot and see if I can get away with that. And then I'll try and just sneak it into the corner of my grow tent um, and allow this little guy to to grow a little bit larger and then see if we get any pups coming from the stem as well. There is still a nice bit of stem there that it, it can grow from, so we'll see. Um, as for the top, I've placed it into the corner of my grow tent. It's not in the most um, intense position, which would be more in the middle. It's just off to the side, so it will still probably um, get loads of light and be quite compact and stressed by the time I end up potting it up, but if I notice it's getting too stressed and losing leaves too quickly, I will probably just put it on my windowsill um, where the light levels are much, much lower, but it should still be able to produce roots uh, sufficiently within that. As for the leaves, I've just arranged them all into this little pot, as you can see, and I'll most likely just sit this on the side somewhere, or maybe my other grow tent um, out of kind of really bright light and then just wait until I start to see the ends of Callist and wait for some roots to form and then we'll um, pot these up. So I think what I'll end up doing is do half of them in soil and half of them in water and then we'll get a really comprehensive look at how they perform in both. So I'll end this video here and then I'll rejoin you again shortly um, when things start to change.